All right, gang, here comes some multiple choice questions. And everything's fair game at this point. We could be a mean land, proportion land, they could be paired, they can be independent, we don't know. So let's read through this. And I always like to start with which land am I in? Okay, two professors, A and B, got into an argument about who grades tougher. Professor A insisted that his grades were lower than those for Professor B. In order to test this theory, each professor took a random sample of 25 student grades and conducted a test of significance. The graphical displays showed that each grade distribution was approximately normal. The results are recorded below. All right, we have the null. The population mean of Professor A equals that of Professor B against the alternate that the population mean of Professor A is less than that of Professor B. And it looks like there's a bunch of statistics here. Okay, so first of all, I see the word mean popping up everywhere. And it looks like they're, they're talking about grades. So I'm gonna assume that some kind of grade out of 100%. So it looks like A is at 79 and B is at 82. So A is under B, right? It does, it, I do see that the average for Professor A is less than Professor B, but I, I just wanna start scribbling things on the side here. So again, I'm in mean land. I have two sets of data, right? Because we have the 25 students from Professor A's class and the 25 students from Professor B. So I have two samples, two sets of data. I need to decide if they're independent or paired, right? That's always a really good question to ask. So do I think that the results from Professor A, how Professor A graded, have any effect on how Professor B graded? And no, that's, I don't think that at all, right? And I, I would say that's true in my own life. The way I grade you guys on my tests has nothing to do with how another teacher grades their class. I, I have no business um, telling another teacher how to grade. Or maybe I have some business, but I don't do it. Anywho, all right, so they're definitely independent. Because we're in mean land, we're gonna be running a t-test. And then actually, when I look at it, they already ran the t-test for me, right? Here's my standard deviation in each class. Here are my standard errors on the sampling distribution. Again, I would take six divided by the square root of 25, four divided by the square root of 25. There's my test statistic. There were my degrees of freedom. And oh, there's the big one. There's a p-value. All right, so it says, which of the following conclusions is or potentially are supported by the results of the significance test? All right, so I'm gonna keep in mind the p-value I know is gonna be a big one. I'll keep that in mind. All right, and then let's see if we can figure out which of these sentences are true, and then if we can deduce anything in this type of multiple choice problem. Okay, so here we go. It says at the 5% level, we have evidence to show that every student in Professor A's class scored lower than every student in Professor B's class. All right, that sounds good, but there's something wrong with this sentence. All right, so I'll give you that if you look at the 5% alpha level, right, you would say, hey, Miss A, P value is less than alpha, so I'm gonna reject H naught. And I agree with you there. But be careful. If we rejected H naught, we would say, and I'm gonna try and keep both of these in view, so let me scooch this down just a bit. We would say that we have evidence that the average, the mean of Professor A, is less than the mean of Professor B, right? We would not say we have evidence to show that every student in Professor A's class scored lower than every student in Professor B's. The problem with that first sentence right here, option I, is the word every. If this had said average, I would have been on board with this, right? And, and this one also would have had to say average. But it's very possible that one student over here scored better than some student here. But the average student in Professor A, or I think I said that backwards, excuse me, um, the there is, it's possible that one student from Professor A's class outscored somebody in Professor B, but the average Professor A score was lower than the average Professor B score. So again, it's this word every that's messing it up, okay? All right, so then let's see what else we got. It says, if there were no difference in grades between the two professors, so right here, this sentence is saying, if the null was true, Right? There was no difference because that's what we're saying. These two means are equal. So if the null is true, then we could get results as extreme as those from the samples approximately 2.2% of the time. Well, that interpretation is the p-value. That's exactly what the p-value says. If the null is true, you get the data you saw just by chance. And what was our p-value? It was 0.022, which is 2.2%. So this sentence is true. 
All right, so at this point, I know one is false and two is true. All right, and this is the interpretation of the p-value. The p-value always says, if the null is true, what's the probability that what you saw in your data happens just by chance? Well, it happens 2% of the time, or technically 2.2%. All right, so let's start strategizing here. I know one is not true, so that means I can rule out A and C. I also know two is true, so that still leaves me with options B or D. All right, so let's find out if sentence three is true. The test results are not valid since the conditions necessary to perform the tests were not met. All right, well, let's try and figure out if that's correct or not. So I'm gonna go through my assumptions here. Let me get my my trait table. We're in mean land. It's two sample independent. So here we go. Let's see if we got this. Um, did I have randomly selected samples? And yes, it says I had a random sample. Oh, you can't see it. It's out of view. But the phrase random sample was in there. Did I have independent samples? Sure did. Did I have normal population distributions? Yeah. If I scooch this back up, let me make sure it's all getting into view. Let me go right back to the beginning so we can see it all. So here we go, right? Random samples, normal distributions. Okay. Do I know my two sample standard deviations? Sure do, right? Here they are, boom, boom. All right, so all of that information was given to me, so my assumptions were definitely met. So this is, they are not valid since the conditions are met? No, JK, they are totally valid. So this is the only true sentence, so B is going to be my answer, okay? All right. So let's take a look at example six. Example six is asking us, hey, which of these is a matched pairs design? Well, let's read through them and see if we can spot which one is the matched pairs. All right, so a teacher compares the pretest and post-test scores of students. Well, well, that's it. There was the before and after, okay? So that's, that's the matched pairs. Let's look at the other two just to talk about why they are not matched pairs. So a teacher compares the scores of students using a computer-based method of instruction with the scores of other students using a traditional method of instruction. So you can hear that these are two different groups of students. One's using your computer-based method, one's using the traditional method. So since those are two different groups of students, they're not gonna affect how each other are doing. So this would, if we were gonna run a hypothesis test, this would be the independent version. So this would be the two sample mean t-test right, where this was the paired mean t-test. So again, paired samples or paired data, independent samples. All right, a teacher compares the scores of students in her class on a standardized test to the national average. Well, this is just, they only have one set of students, right? This is just one set of students. So this is a one sample mean t-test. Right, we're gonna compare that teacher's average to whatever the national average was. So here we had paired mean, two sample mean, one sample mean. All right, so we got a couple more multiple choice that we're gonna try out and then we're almost done with this chapter. I'll see you in a bit, gang, bye.